Come to me, Ellie Mascal. Hello. So this is the first show that I am doing since uh, Biden was inaugurated as president of the United States. Wow. I thought you looked particularly handsome and glowing this morning. The way it feels different today. <laughs> it does. It does. You wrote a great piece, too, by the way, about, well, first of all, it's just been so glorious, the Twitter silence. But, you know, Twitter and Facebook just proved that deplatforming works. Thank you. And, oh, my God, it, can I? Go ahead. So go ahead. Yes. So so what I did on inauguration, obviously, you know, I loved the day. Amanda Gorman just laid it mm. down. That was mm. brilliant. I loved watching um, Kamala Harris take her position as vice president. What I did for most of the afternoon was to scour, scour Twitter um, looking for photos of the state capitol protests. If you remember, these white supremacist insurrectionists um, promised to not only return back to the Capitol on Inauguration Day, but to fan out all across the country um, and protest at state capitals. And when I say nobody showed up, I mean, well, that's, it's, that's not fair. One guy showed up in New York. Uh, <laughs> there was one dude in Sacramento. Uh, there were about three or four dudes in Texas. So I just, I just tried to capture all the pictures of these lonely protesters because it turns out lone Trump protester is my favorite phrase in the English language. Yes. <laughs> and so I did that for all Inauguration Day. But the, the, the point of it, besides the schadenfreude, and I'm not going to lie, a lot of it was cathartic. But yes. the, the point of that was that this is what happens when you deplatform white supremacists and crazy people, right? Twitter, um, you know, uh, uh, nuked like 70,000 accounts. Facebook nuked like 10,000 Instagram accounts. And just by doing that, in two weeks, we went from armed insurrection at the Capitol to one dude with a Trump flag in Albany. Like that, that is the Delta. There are lots mm -hmm. of factors there, but one of the biggest ones was that these people were kicked off of Facebook. This one guy, last thing I'll say, this one guy in Texas literally said when asked by a reporter, you know, what do you think about the turnout today? He said, well, I don't know if more is going on elsewhere. I got kicked out of Facebook, so I can't find everybody. He Yay. said that. He yeah. said that, right? Yeah. That's and proof that these companies, when they deplatform the bad people, have an effect on our politics. Yeah. Yes. And by the way, that's not the last thing you're going to say. Otherwise, what would be the point of having you on? But my <laughs> point. But my point, I, you know, I mean, this is okay. One of the many reasons Bill Maher drives me crazy. I don't know if you saw he got a, a black guy guest last week to say that racism isn't really a thing and it, uh, that COVID is not disproportionately affecting black people. But let's put that aside. He also did a whole thing about how, you know, he's not for cancel culture and they shouldn't have taken Trump off Twitter. Oh, my God. Ellie, there is a difference between free speech and inciting violence. And the sixth is not the first time Trump has incited violence that has killed people, right? That's the difference. The, the, there is a class of people out here who honestly think that the worst thing that can happen to you is to be banned from a private service. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. There is no First Amendment. There just is no First Amendment issue when a private company does, takes these actions. There's, there's not, I can't. I mean, many people have tried to explain that. If you're, if you don't get that at this point, you're just unwilling to learn. All right, like you, the First Amendment does not come into play here. What does come into play is these private companies' business models, and all they're saying right now is that it is bad for their business to host insurrection. That thank you. Right. Republicans Whoa. used to like letting the market decide. Remember, Republicans are the people who are going to go out there and tell us that yes. the market is who should decide who gets food. And the market is who should decide who gets housing. And the market is who should decide who gets health care. So they're fine with the market deciding all of these critical fundamental issues, but the market deciding who gets to plot insurrection or not? No, no, that we can't let leave up. Yes. To nah, screw y'all. No. Uh, yeah. It, we, it, well, listen, we, it's we linked to at, at the, at the, at the least. Yeah. And we linked to your brilliant piece, but I just love the way you said it. We now have evidence the biggest threat to American democracy was not the violent, you know, rioters, but the bad faith Republicans who work at the Capitol spent two months fueling the big lie the election was stolen. We have evidence Trump could never have threatened democratic self-government without the help of social media companies. And we now have a case study on what happens to insurrectionists when private companies refuse to let them use these platforms to recruit, organize and incite violence. They melt away. Deplatforming works, delegitimizing de people 
people like Cruz and Hawley and Trump works. Um, and I, I just said that. I've been saying that all week, Ellie. It's like we punched the main bully in the nose and all the other bullies scattered, you know, and that's and what it feels like. You said there's a lot of factors. I'd argue the biggest one is the social media companies took away their toys. Right. And you it, see lone Trump supporter. <laughs> and, what, right? and what we see as well, again, to get back to this First Amendment point, what we see is that the First Amendment is still alive and well. These people, the, the two guys that showed up here and the three guys that showed up there, those people were allowed to go protest. Those, no, the government did not stop them from going to state capitals and screaming, I hate the government. Like this, this is what protest is supposed to be, right? This is, supposed, this is how it's supposed to work. You go out in public with your little sign and you say whatever the hell you want to say and nobody stops you. That is the First Amendment. What they right. want is not the First Amendment. What they want is a recruitment and organizational tool for insurrection and violence. Yeah. And well, Twitter said, and look, Facebook are not required to provide that today. You say, you made a point of Proud Boys pledged themselves to Emperor Trump not three months ago are now calling him a total failure. I mean, moving Trump from Twitter for two weeks has already helped cause a rift between the militant forces of white supremacy and the head of the Republican Party. And you said if Twitter had banned Trump's account the moment he started lying about the election, that five people wouldn't have died at the Capitol, right? You said if they'd banned him when he, he started lying about coronavirus, hundreds of thousands of people might be alive. Uh, you know, right, if, he, if they had banned him when he lied about Barack Obama's nation of birth, he wouldn't have been president in the first place. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's late, but thank God they did it, right? Here's another thing, and I, and I, and I, feel, and I feel like this, this point gets lost sometimes. Like, if you want to support somebody, go in person and support these people, right? Like, I'm not ashamed of the groups that I support. I'm not, I, I don't try to hide my support for Lombada Legal, all right? When they invite me to their conference, I go speak, right? Like, uh, I'm happy to be associated with them. What Trump and Hawley and Cruz want to do is that they want to be kind of angel investors into the Proud Boys and angel investors into the Oath Keepers, but they don't want to show up for the meeting. And what yeah. Twitter was allowing them to do was just to slide into their DMs, be like, yo, you guys, you guys, I really like you. I really like you, but I can't say it public. Like, that's what they were allowing. No, no, no. You want to be an Oath Keeper? Go, go. They have a meeting. Go and go to your meeting, Josh Hawley, so everybody can mm -hmm. see you doing it. And that, again, nobody would stop him, but everybody yeah. would get to know what he's doing. Yeah, and as you said, we've now approved deplatforming liars and violent extremists just might save our country. I mean, so let's talk impeachment because I, you know, first of all, you have them screaming it's unconstitutional. Electric it boogaloo. You too, electric boogaloo too. <laughs> but it's, I mean, first of all, it's not unconstitutional. And if impeachment is not for violently trying to overthrow the government of the United States, what's it for? I mean. Right, I mean, like this. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> Look, I thought he should have been impeached the first time. I thought there were three or four other times where he committed impeachable offenses that he should have been impeached for. I would have impeached that man. Like, I would have impeached him once every six months, like it was tradition. Um, yeah. But here we are. He incited a mob against his own government. He, he, he attempted, it was a failed, it was, it was a push is what he did. That's, that's yeah. a failed coup d'etat. Um, wh wh why, what, why is that clause there if not for this? The, 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 the court has, sorry, the Senate in the past has impeached people who are already out of office. There's nothing in the Constitution, which I have read back to front many times, that says that you can't impeach a person after they're out of office. It should happen again. And really, the thing that gets me about this is that it's an easy win for Republicans. It is the easiest thing for the Republicans to do right now to distance themselves from the Trump administration by saying, look, we allowed him to do all of these horrible things, and now he's not even in power. But once he can't hurt us anymore, once his little Twitter account's been taken away, we can vote for impeachment. That's actually easy. That would help their party. The reason yep. they don't want to do it is not because they're afraid of Trump anymore, but it's because they desperately want who, wait for it, the white domestic terrorists to vote for them later. Like that's why they won't do it. Not yeah. because there's any like not because there's any pushback from Donald Trump. It's because there are they want his crazy white supporters 
to support them in their future political ambitions. And, and by the way, I said earlier, they're all just like him, whether it's Madison Cawthorn or Tom Cotton, they're all liars and frauds. You told a story about Tom Cotton, but so as you tweeted, um, Right. Somebody tweeted, it wouldn't surprise no one that Tom Cotton is a liar, but I would have bet he was too smart to go in for stolen valor. I would have been wrong. And you said it isn't my lane to fight because I barely spot the difference between an army ranger and a power ranger. But stolen <laughs> valor seems bad. Right. Pretending that you were an army ranger when you weren't seems bad. But go ahead. Everybody, everybody calls Tom Cotton smart because he went to Harvard Law School. And I just so. Tom Cotton was two years ahead of me in Harvard Law School. And this is a this is an urban legend about Tom Cotton. I, I can't prove this. I was not there in the room. So take everything I'm saying with a little bit of a grain of salt. This is this was told to me by others. But what was told to me by others, this is hearsay evidence, inadmissible in court, um, was that Tom Cotton, uh, two years again, two years ahead of me in law school, was in a study group, apparently. Um, and you know, Harvard Law study groups are actually very contentious. It's not a study group. It's a, am I smarter than this guy group? It's very weird. Um, so he's in this study group and he's losing, basically. He's losing the debate. He's getting- It's a, it's uh, a genetically superior pissing match, but go ahead. All right. right. Exactly. He's losing yeah. He's losing the DNA match. Um, and so some woman, apparent, again, urban legend, some woman apparently is like going to town on him about FDA regulations that he was just wrong about or whatever. And so Cotton apparently gets red faced and says to no one, you know nothing about cows. <laughs> what? <laughs> Storms out of the room. Oh, because the <laughs> woman was like telling him, taking him to town about how the FDA. And so for a time at law school, when Tom Cotton would come in, there would be like, <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, now Devin Nunes has to hire him to defend him in the suit about suing the Twitter cow. Okay, no, um, I don't Ellen, know if that story is true, but I but like right. the point, the reason why I don't feel bad telling it is that this idea that Tom Cotton knows what he's talking about is right. ridiculous, right? He right. he he was a he he appears to have been a bad law student and is certainly a bad senator at applying the law. Yeah. All right. We got to have you back because, I mean, you can follow Ellie on Twitter because you just look, legally you're just laughing your ass off. Speaking of Harvard Law School, about how crappy Trump's EOs were compared to uh, Biden's executive orders. I think all of Trump's just said black guy bad. No, that's all they said. But legally <laughs> not. OK. And then I, just all of it. Right. But between all of these, this new evidence for the impeachment trial and apparently the defense is going to be that the voter fraud was real. Good luck with all of it legally, right? <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's, again, they're, they're, they're doing the same things. They're trying to hurt the country and they're trying to do it for their own selfish political ambitions. It's really, it's a low moment for the country, but we, at some level, at some point we have to get beyond these people. We have to keep, we have to keep stepping and we have to keep going forward. And I, and I, so far the Biden administration has, has acted like it's doing that. So I'm happy. And that. she has just lifted the ban on transgender people serving in the military as we speak. Hooray. Um, Ellie, please come back. Oh my God. And I can't wait to, to hear about your new book and we love you and we miss you and we'll see you soon.